good evening everyone so uh, we are about to start our session there is a minor hitch uh, of audio but we are rectifying that in a minute we will be starting so today we have uh, uh, dr mukund thakur sir and dr uh, prakash jain as our panelist and the speaker is uh, none other than dr samir rege who is going to speak on etep for ventral hernia so uh, as soon as his audio is online i will get you uh, get back to you till that time if uh, dr thakur sir can just introduce about the topic on a bit it would be better thakur sir please unmute yourself or dr prakash jain you can you can just uh, start or uh, just describe the topic in short uh, by that time i'll take uh, dr samir online sure i think uh, uh, am i audible yeah yeah loud and clear yeah okay so i think this is a, a newish uh, operation actually and i think uh, something that is very exciting because it one it reduces our costs it uh, also extends the um, applications of laparoscopy and dr samir of course is well known uh, for advanced laparoscopic especially ventral hernia repairs and i think we all can look forward to a good session from him um i think dr thakur also would have done a quite a few of these uh, since the operation has been described and uh, i'd look forward to hearing from him as well uh, his thoughts on applications and uh, how far we can extend this um this operation yeah 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 samir sir please unmute yourself on your mobile please unmute yourself on your mobile there is an option to unmute yourself on mobile hello ah uh, i can you hear me now uh, yeah, yeah. Hello. we are getting your yes 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 so oh, very good so can you start yes 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 sir yes please yes i think yes. Uh, mukund thakur sir is there yes yeah. 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 good evening good evening sir good evening and we look forward to hear from the master about this uh, novel topic <laughs> <laughs> sir professor ahat tumhi to tumhala master as mannar na sir mi kithe jor ata ahat chalu karayche pehile so sir, sir sir before I, begin we have uh, we have one very close friend online also dr vikas jain vikas jain yes, sir please yeah. unmute yourself and give a go ahead to dr samir sir so that we can start the session vikas yes. sir hello dr samir ah yeah. vikas welcome to vsa hi <laughs> welcome oh, to vsa thank you i am i am uh, i am highly obliged means uh, i am really uh, looking forward to have this good lecture because i have wasted me i am not wasted i invested lot of my at least 6 hours yesterday night after yogesh spoke to me till the time i was taking very lightly but uh, looking at the enthusiasm of everybody i am very happy i i am i have think i have done a lot of uh, research on it and uh, i have tried to put technical details so that most people should benefit from it yes samir we want step by yeah. step of this surgery and uh, what are the pros and cons of any uh, type of uh, changes what you are doing yes uh, so with permission of the chair can i just start yeah please go yeah. ahead sir uh, please go sir, ahead is any, any step you feel that i am going little fast anything you want me to get cleared off you can just stop me there because then that that point should not miss because later on to come back to same point may be little difficult okay so uh, we'll just start uh, clearing some concepts now when we talk about etp uh, initially the label was endoscopic total extraperitoneal now the, this is endoscopy was you, you don't enter abdomen so it was label endoscopic however finally you have to, for open, opening the and reducing the sac and repairing you require to open the abdomen by opening the posterior rectus sheath that's where it, the, the term was taken back and then it turned out to be extended totally extraperitoneal now this procedure was initially the started for inguinal hernias which is credited to jorge diaz 
but however it was extended by igor belensky who worked with uh, professor novitsky uh, and he popularized for ventral hernias now this basic surgery is revolves around the basic principle of uh, putting a retromuscular mesh so a recto rectus mesh bit lies between two linear seminales and creating a plane in between and thus carries the principle of reeve stopa based on pascal's law principle so now just for the benefit of everybody there are four areas layers where you can put the mesh one is onlay which lies over the anterior rectus sheath inlay which most commonly for a marathi person we always think in should be from inside it is not that way inlay is something like bridging so if there is a defect and you put the mesh from one edge to other edge it is called inlay when we talk of sublay sublay is bit below the muscles but above the peritoneum so a preperitoneal repair or a recto rectal repair would both classify as sublay and a underlay which is classically for the ipom where where it's a misnomer ipom is called intraperitoneal onlay mesh it's a misnomer so it's a underlay mesh repair now if you really see when this procedure started uh, popping up in the market for the last 2 and 3 years most people saw that uh, e tap should replace ipom now i will go to reasons why it won't replace ipom but this is a good algorithm which i have found which has been published in indian journal of surgery by uh, dr sarfaraz beg now he categorically says that if you have a defect of less than 2 cm you can opt for either only a suture repair which is open or laparoscopic or you can still put a ipom mesh if it's recurrent of 2 cm is preferable to put a ipom mesh so it is not ipom plus because they don't try try and suture the defect if it's the defect is somewhere between 2 to 4 cm you can attempt a ipom plus mesh so you disclose the suture and put a ipom mesh however in these patients if they are accompanied up to from 2 cm to about 8 cm you with and associated with either divarication or only a primary hernia you can opt for e tap repair now a slight deviation if your defect more than 6 cm at times if you are doing a e tap repair it is preferable that surgeon is prepared for doing not only a reeve stopa repair but at times may have to do a uh, either one sided or bilateral transverse abdominis release now up till now we are talking about midline defects if you are talking about some lateral defect yes most of these e tap or ipom would do depending on the size but e tap would be superior because it's some it's a retro rectus so the mesh would not come in contact but however e tap would categorize only between both linear and semilunaris so you would have to have additional transverse abdominis release so if you have i will not go in further details of this uh, algorithm so e tap classically would fit in a hernia primary or a incisional hernia which has defect more than 2 cm and above up to 6 cm a uh, increase in defect would rather categorize for transverse abdominis or a posterior component separation in the same procedure now what would be the advantage of retromuscular repair when we see about uh, anti anterior or on the repair the mesh may come in contact with the subcute and then the exterior if there is infection retromuscular repair is most physiological why first it it, it usually reinforces the defect posterior to the defect so it is most physiological as per the pascal's law when you think about uh, retromuscular being a highly vascular relatively vascular area it is resistant to infections because of good blood supply so good lot of protective mechanisms are available there for the infections to get drained and if you have a little larger defect for if you are putting a an anterior mesh for larger means bigger skin flaps if you are doing a e tap or a open retromuscular repair if you are lateral you have to put lateral incision you can add with a posterior component and put a larger mesh now when you are doing the the reeve stopa for a ventral hernia i am not particularly saying for e tap that is laparoscopic i think even for open you require a large mesh which can fit in from one linea to another linea similaris so in between you have to cut posterior rectus sheet on either sides on the medial aspect it can extend superiorly from zephy sternum to cave of redzia so going below the pubic symphysis 
and hence you can tackle most of the midline hernias which are suitable and amenable for the any rectorectus or uh, reeve stopa repair most important most of these midline hernias are associated with rectus uh, diastasis which can be easily corrected while doing a et repair most important advantage what a, a, a normal surgeon would see is there the, the process is not the very costly and you can use a regular polypropylene or a polyester mesh preferable are macroporous so and you do not require ex expensive tackers for fixation the added advantage what what uh, academician would always think of is the mesh does not come in contact with intestine so there would be less bowel injuries the less number of adhesions and less number of either fistulation from the intestine am i very fast no i don't think hello no, no. it's okay. going on nicely it's okay. going on well okay so what are means the if you are uh, putting a et prepare for every every ventral hernia is is accepted uh, most are people would argument argue is, is then when you are doing a et the zif, the dissection would start from zifi sternum and would because you require a crossover superiorly and a crossover inferiorly superior crossover is over the falciform and the inferior crossover is below the arcuate line i'll come to what crossover we are talking to but this is what a extent of dissection will be so for about 2 cm or 3 cm defect the possible dissection would extend from somewhere zifi sternum a little below the zifi sternum to somewhere of pubic symphysis so the extent of dissection is too large for a small defect uh, i perm a poss possibly takur sir would finish in maybe 20 25 minutes but for a etap it while doing if i if i am doing some dissection it would take minimum of 1 1 and 1/2 hour to 2 hours now if you are doing for a recurrent hernia at times the peritoneum or the posterior rectus sheath may be deficient at some places one or because of multiple times suturing in recurrent hernias it may be weakened so you may be have to be prepared for you putting a ipom mesh if you may not be able to suture the posterior rectus sheath or may have to convert to open second if the personally this entire procedure you i will i will show you it's a blind procedure so you are based on either clinical findings or on the ultrasonic findings what the contents would be so if when if the hernia is irreducible it poses a big challenge to reduce the hernia without damaging any of the content now when we are tackling m1 and m2 defects i will come back to what it is uh etap is not a good choice because both sides are subcostal margins and the linea alba is little wider so to approximate the posterior rectus sheath or the peritoneum in m1 and m2 areas is extremely difficult so possibly a small defect even in this area would entitle for a tar so that these are some limitations of a etap repair now this is what a classification which has been suggested by the uh, european hernia society so this is what m1 m2 m3 m4 would be so m1 is subzifoidal about 3 cm then uh, about 6 cm in umbilical area and the midway between will be m2 so similar for suprapubic area is m5 which is about 3 cm and 3 cm below the umbilicus to 3 cm of the pubic symphysis would be m4 uh, mind well if you are doing uh, etap for a uh, infra umbilical hernia you can still do for a little bigger than 6 cm because the prs is not there the peritoneum is lax enough that it can come and you can suture it little relatively easier so there are not very hard and fast rules that you can attempt etap for somewhere between 2 to 6 cm at times you can extend the the, the indication based on whether you can suture it only without a tensionless closure of posterior rectus sheath now what special things would you require if you are planning a etap uh, a good uh, monitor good camera system and it should be preferable two monitors the classical the etap the surgeon stands on the head end of the patient so and may have to move towards the left low side so monitors are preferred one at the right leg end and another at the right shoulder of the patient Uh, the high definition camera system with good optics the surgeon should be well versed with doing sectoral vision dissection so it is 
I will show you what ports come. So usually the, the you can try and rotate a camera. You can change from a 10 degrees to five five ten millimeter uh, telescope to a five millimeter telescope. However, if the, what I prefer is keeping the telescope at only one area, and uh, we try and do dissection with sectoral vision. However, when we come for suturing, I try and add one more port, the fourth port, and try and have a somewhat triangulation for the ergonomic uh, suturing of the defect. When you when you are doing such advanced procedure, the camera person be trained because he exactly has to know what you are dealing with when you are try, exactly trying to come for a crossover. And at times when you are trying to do a crossover, there can be some fenestration in the uh, peritoneum or the posterior rectus sheath, which will cause bulging of the, the peritoneum and the posterior rectus sheath, causing added difficulty. At time at this time, the camera person. Is extremely important because you are at the verge. You are trying to cross over into the opposite side rectus sheath, and the peritoneum still bulging onto you. The surgeon has to be extremely proficient in laparoscopic suturing. At times, he should be well versed with the sectoral suturing, which I will show you. That we try to do the with uh, triangular vision, but finally with small fenestration, we had to resort to sectoral suturing. Now you require a regular hand instruments, not much, but uh, two important things. I would uh, uh, trust that a good needle holder, what a surgeon is used to, and a good bipolar instrument, because at times there is small ooze or bleed from the muscles, rectus muscles, uh, so it can be nagging to the surgeon. So it's preferable uh, instead of using a uh, uh, high-end uh, harmonic or something, you require a good bipolar which can take care. Barb suture. Yes, it it will definitely help the surgeon while suturing, but actually it is not must. In my video, I, I will show you what what barb suture helps, and I will I will also show you how a regular suture can be used for suturing. And most important, you will require a macroporous large mesh. You can do with a regular heavyweight polypropylene mesh, what you will see in my video, but uh, it's always preferable macroporous because it allow a lot of fibrous tissue to creep in and cause good fibrosis. And also does not allow that much shrinkage as what a heavyweight polypropylene mesh would do. So these are two things, uh, two pictures which are more important in ETEP because when you are seeing on the what you are seeing on the right side of uh, the uh, uh, coronal view of the anteroabdominal wall, uh, you can see that the uh, insertion of the linear uh, semilunus and the obliques going into. So that is what. A space, what you can see delineated in white, is going to be a ETEP space which we are going to dissect. So mind well, when you are going to come into subcostal area, that the area gets narrowed, and you have a wider linear alba in between. Uh, I am extremely sorry for whatever the, the projection may be little, uh, little not a good quality, but the linear alba is little wider as high up you go. So any small defect you are at, going to attempt in this region M1 and M2, the the uh, linear alba and the the posterior sheath, however close you cut to the linear alba, is going to be still far off to close or suture with a pneumoperitoneum or inflated abdomen. So that that is where. Uh, the ETEP for M1 and M2 the, the defects is not going to be easy. Now, when we are coming to the the, the other the picture, when you see the the, uh, the you see the cross view of the upper where where you can see two rectus and coming between a wider linear alba where the and three obliques inserting getting insert into a limicinomes. Mind well when you are seeing the inferior. If I can show you with my arrow. You can see the, in the uh, inferior pegastic much below the rectus muscle, while when you go below the arcuate line, you can see the inferior pegastic the coming onto the lateral aspect. This is extremely important. While you are going to dissect in the when you are going to start, you are going to go in the retrorectus plane in this plane, and going to go up to the cave of Regius. Then you are going to have a crossover. Now, when we are, what we are talking about crossover. Crossover is cutting of going into dissecting one rectus rectus space, cutting the posterior rectus sheath near the linear alba on the ipsilateral side, going above the peritoneum, so very close to linear alba, and identifying the posterior rectus sheath on the contralateral side and opening it and creating a plane. Now this can be achieved at only two places. One is somewhere above the falciform, which is much much higher up in the epigastrium. 
that is a classical method what a etf would be done there is bottom up approach where you put ports in a reverse fashion where you have defect somewhere either supraumbilical so little m3 going towards m2 and you try and dissect from lower so you have the, you have a crossover below the level of arcuate line and go in a cranial fashion so the i would just refresh some concepts the posterior tissue on either side join to form linea alba which can which have a normal breadth of about 2 to 3 cm so when we open when we do a laparotomy we always and in a worry that we are trying to open the we are trying to visualize some of the rectus muscle but mind well when you are going somewhere higher up or cranially it is about 2 to 3 cm so when we have a cross over is a term where dissection from uh, enters from one uh, rectus space into the contralateral space after cutting the medial insertion of posterior rectus sheath now at this place you should take outmost care not to damage two structures one is linea alba because it maintains the integrity of the anterior abdominal wall it is supposed to be the main support of the anterior abdominal as what a spine would be for the posterior uh, posterior wall now second important structure you require to preserve is the peritoneum you can cause fenestration this is the initial start and if any fenestration in the peritoneum or to the posterior sheath that the patient is going to have pneumoperitoneum and that's where it's going to bulge and cause difficulty in creation of the contralateral recto, uh, recto rectus space second important thing is when you are doing recto rectus dissection the neurovascular bundle which supply the rectus muscle enter the rectus muscle near the linea seminalis they can be two or three uh, main branches which come laterally so you can dissect the posterior sheath there but when you are coming as lateral as possible you be very careful especially if you are using a diathermy or you are using a ultra scission way to dissect because it can just cut and any injury to all these nerves can cause atrophy of rectus muscle on the ipsilateral side and cause bulging in the post operative period now it is extremely important to stay in a plane very near the posterior rectus sheath and once you go below the the arcuate line near the peritoneum because if you go little higher up you may try and cause bleeding through the muscular branches of rectus muscle any fenestration of this peritoneum have to be carefully washed remembered and sutured at the last now when you it, it's a normal they say that uh, the distance between the two linear seminalis should be around 15 to 20 cm in a normal person it can vary so whenever you have dissected you please measure it by putting a the sterile scale inside and then only a appropriate mesh should be put because the mesh should be always flat it should be without wrinkles a larger mesh is going to curl inside and would allow lot of seroma to remain there which will in turn cause infections and cause further problems now the falciform ligament should be dissected from linea alba to have a intact peritoneum the prs on the either side be cut near the linea alba if you by chance cut farther away from the linea alba that that bigger or larger defect would be there in the posterior rectus sheath which will be difficult to the suture and appro get it approximated so the, the if you are if the if by chance the you uh, cut the posterior rectus a little far off there's a the, the trouble shooting is you can suture, still suture the peritoneum over it so as to uh, cover the posterior rectus sheath so that you do not have the increased tension on the posterior rectus sheath at times you you, you are in the, in infraumbilical area and you have a wider defect this time you can you can still go go down under the uh, inferior flap go and dissect bladder nicely down so you can have a loose lower flap loose peritoneal flap which can be brought up and you can suture it horizontally this decreases tension the the uh, if you suture posterior rectus sheath in tension that is the most dangerous thing to do which can lead to a prs rupture which is most dreadful uh, complication of this surgery now the what suture material require you require a uh, absorbable or a delayed absorbable suture material preferably bladder for a posterior rectus sheath to close anterior rectus anterior uh, defect can be sutured with non absorbable or a delayed that is basically pds The, the where this can be used the posterior rectus sheath is usually sutured with uh, intracorporeal only 
However, anterior uh, preferable is always intracorporeal. But if somebody has difficulty, you can also use extracorporeal as what we do for IPOM uh, defects. Now, what approaches? There are two approaches. Standard, where we the, we, we have all the ports placed in the supra umbilical region, and a bottom up approach. It's preferred for defect the hernia defects in M2 or higher M3, where you can have the, the ports placed on the lower aspect. So the, the indications for ETEP would be a primary ventral hernia, the somewhere from three centimeter to eight centimeter, preferably other than M1 and M2 areas. Incisional hernias, little watchful. I would not put eight centimeter. I may put again three to six centimeters. Lateral hernias you can tackle with ETEP, but you have to be proficient in doing transverse abdominis release because the lateral hernias are always outside linear similarities. So only ETEP would not suffice. You require to have a unilateral or maybe a bilateral trial along with this. Now subzified the again M1. Or a supra-pubic, uh, M1 will definitely require a tar. Supra-pubic, inguinal, or and the uh, inguinal hernia where we have a short distance between umbilicus, two symphysis, you can still do a uh, ETEP for the these kind of hernias. Uh, important thing, the when you are deciding deciding about it, doing the ETEP for any of the patient, it's important thing to explain to the patient what sort of procedure you are going to do. Because the, it's a relatively new procedure, uh, though few complications have been uh, documented, I tried to search for a posterior rectus sheath rupture. Still, did not get lot of references on it. So, if there, there are just by here, say, and just in hearing conferences that these things can happen. So, the, you have to really go and talk to the patient what complications, because still you may be also not aware what things can go wrong. And I would keep a word of caution that when you are doing a E tape, even for a smaller hernia, I would still keep a larger dual mesh because uh, I may still have to do a IPOM if that uh, posterior sheath is weakened or uh, deficient at places, or I may have to convert and put an anterior mesh as a vicral mesh in addition to what polypropylene or uh, macroporous mesh I was going to put for a E tape. So it's always preferable when you are doing some new procedure. When you still are not very confident, even for a confident person, still better to have have a bailout procedures ready if you are in in doubt anywhere. So the uh, OT layout will be the two monitors uh, at the right foot end of the patient and the right shoulder. Uh, the, I, I I will tell you very frankly, we have only have one the one monitor. We I usually try and keep at the right foot end, but little higher up so that I can manipulate from there. Uh, the patient is supine with both hands tucked on side. Uh, operating table should be at lowest and should be a good operating table which can be manoeuvred by the uh, uh, the, the buttons so that uh, the, the, it can be manoeuvred by anesthetist or any the OT technician from far off. Now it's important that you should be able to give head low and head low what other positions possibly can can given by other on other tables. But important you should be able to break the table. And give extension. So if the people have written flexion. Flexion would cause narrowing of the space. But you should be able to extend the entry abdominal wall at times to about 10 to 15 degrees, so as to give increased space when you are doing dissection and allow flexion also when you are doing suturing. The surgeon for a classical approach stands at the left shoulder above above the head, and the camera person surgeon stands beside him. Now, uh, important thing is you will see video where we are using reusable trocars, but uh, an optical disposable trocar is preferred for the first trocar. Why? Because it's usually not 10, it's usually 11, 12, or 15. Now, important thing is it, uh, it can uh, introduce a larger mesh inside that rectorator space quite easily. And uh, more important, when you are trying to have a PRS, uh, you are going to have a crossover and cutting the PRS as high as possible. You can visualize that area through the optical trocar. So it, this is a plus point, but uh, being working in a government setup, uh, we are more used to using reusable trocars. Now, uh, it is preferable, Not these are not compulsory, but it is preferable if you can mark the, the lineal, uh, line, I've written lineal bar, but it is linear semilunaris to be marked so that you exactly know where our port placements are going to be there. And if you can mark the defect, because that will tell you, because at times intraoperative, you may have to change the trocar 
either either you have caused fenestration inside the peri or the peritoneum so you may have to some change make some change at trocar so if you know exactly where the defect lies you you may be it will helpful because when you are in the retrorectal seat plane you may not be able to identify where the the defect will be so until unless you dissect up to that level now nasogastric tube and catheterization may not be a must but if you are a novice or you are a beginner it's preferable that patients are catheterized because you may do it for a little longer time and finally you are going to uh, dissect the cave of hegesias so it's always preferable you catheterize the patient now the any surgeon trying to attempt the again i will trying to do give you a trouble shooting things when you are uh, operating a recurrent the uh, always think that this postrector sheath will be thin may be deficient so always keep ipom the ipom mesh and attacker ready preferably with consent for also open repair uh, when you are tackling with larger defect especially inframlical the uh, you can try and pull up the lower flap and try and suture it, uh, it horizontally which can be little tensionless for the postrector sheath if you are if at times the, the sonogram picks up about 4 and 5 cm but uh, if you are trying to attempt for such at times with gas insufflation that uh, the defect edges go afar off the postrector sheath goes far off and then you are compelled to do posterior component separation so when you are trying to attempt all these be very clear that you may have to do a pi posterior component and you should be well versed with anatomy and proficient in doing knowing exactly what layer you are going to cutting when you are attempting etep for incisional hernia at times you it may be challenging especially if it's post post uh, ipom one or somebody has trying to do a plug or a open uh, the ipom where the mesh can lie inside so there can be lot many adhesions not only to the defect area but surrounding into the postrector sheath which you may have to go in and do adhesolysis also uh, complications uh, if if you have a thin peritoneum at times may be difficult to approximate again you may have to convert to tar ipom or may have to convert now prs ruptures have been documented though not not much literature has been seen uh, where when the surgeon possibly has tried to suture the the postrector sheath at some tension time to compromise not doing adequate job on the lateral aspect one or not doing a, a posterior component just to give a tensionless repair so a strenuous activity or sudden cuffing at times can give rise to this patient will come with classical acute abdominal pain at times may have herniation between the prs and the mesh which is a polypropylene mesh and the bowel can the bowel gets exposed to prs uh, bowel can get exposed to polypropylene mesh and can get adherent so a patient can also present with either peritonitis or obstruction this is a grave complication you require a good clinical suspicion you require to get ct scan ct scan also you should have a suspicion to understand what we are looking for but in any doubt if patient has come immediately the after the surgery within 3 months with acute abdominal pain not settling and clinical signs not responding please 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 do a real laparoscopy because you you are you may see some wonders and you have to negotiate the the your own complications uh, it may be not very easy the uh, trying to tackle that because bowel may be stuck to uh, polypropylene mesh or whatever mesh you have put there may be herniation between prs and the mesh mesh and the anterior sheath so it may not be easy so uh, try and call for help and if you still are lucky and avoid any of the complications with intest intestines there you may have to put a very large ipom mesh so you should be proficient enough to handle that large mesh when you are inside abdomen especially with that obstructed bowel so uh, mind well this the, the, all procedures look very nice and uh, nice and good to be labeled that we do it but at times when you see your own complications you may not dare to do another case next but i am not discouraging anybody you please attempt but be very careful when you are selecting any of your patient and venturing in any of the option uh, third thing i would like to put is nerve injuries nerve injury especially the when you are dissecting more laterally or the near linear seminaris and especially you are very very confident using uh, ultra cision and uh, having a good uh, vascular pain you may definitely damage these nerves if you are not looking for them so please try be very careful try and bear your postrector sheath 
go as lateral as possible try and identify nerve the nerve uh, trunks as possible and be away from so when you are if you are, have to do a uh, posterior component you try and be medial to that and rest other ways you can go lateral as near as linear similaris now if you are insufflating after, after in any of the posterior uh, posterior space has been created and many surgeons would try and inflate at pressure of about 20 to have good amount of co2 in, going inside and cause separation so these things would prevent cause lot of stretching of the nerves and cause sensory loss especially to the area where the rectus muscle lies which may come up because this is because of neuropraxia so this this would go the neuropraxia may extend for some at, at least somewhere about 8 weeks to about 6 months so you have to be patient with the relative and tell them these things can still happen now uh, the steps i would narrate would be the, the classical method was what we did this the surgeon standing at the head end somewhere near the left shoulder uh, there are two methods to enter the left rectus space i will show both videos uh, classical what we do is what i do in open uh, regular tp as uh, go higher up in the left side epigastrium the between the subcostal and the linea alba i will take a transverse incision you should have about 11 mm for a 10 mm uh, port i would dissect and identify anterior rectus sheath here i take a small incision horizontally now important is horizontal incision which would be about 8 mm not more than that now horizontal incision i will tell you why i take after that you identify vertical rectus muscle which are split and you identify the posterior rectus sheath now there are after doing this there are two ways at say this time i usually have my zero degrees telescope here which i use initially which is cannulated already with a 10 mm port which is directly inserted below the rectus muscles so this is one direct entry as what i do for tp some people who are the, who are from the the mukund uh, thakur thakur sir can do they can usually use the disposable balloons where they can insufflate inside put a balloon insufflate create a plane and then put a optical trocar and do third method is where you can use a optical trocar which a person should be proficient has to understand that he is piercing anterior sheath he the he visualizes muscle and you should be concentrating at the tip of the optical trocar where he understands that he is seeing something white which is the posterior sheath where the vertical optical trocar is immediately showed up by 45 degrees and made horizontal and it just enters the rectus rectus plane which i will show now the question is why we want a transverse incision on the anterior rectus sheath up till now we were trying to enter posterior rectus sheath in a vertical fashion and now when we are going to dissect our instruments are going to be horizontal now if i take a vertical incision on the post anterior rectus sheath and the vertical muscles with my the torque on the sheath and the muscles that opening on the sheath is going to increase and i am going to have some gas leak so it's preferable something like grid iron what we do for macburnies i try to use this same similar principle where to avoid any gas leak so take a smaller incision horizontal on the anterior rectus sheath split the muscles and visualize the posterior rectus sheath and identify rectus rectus plane once this plane is identified this dissection is carried down caudally up to the level where i am either think i am below the level of umbilicus and if possible up to the level of cave of regius once this is done two working ports are placed i will show you what port placements are and then we do a crossover now at this time most of the etp so called surgeons try and convert the uh, 10 mm uh, telescope to a 5 mm and place it in the first co working port as a subcostal port and use the epigastric what was the optical port before and the lower some somewhere near lumbar port uh, for the having the crossover which usually i don't do i only convert from 10 10 to 1030 keep the optical trocar same and try and do a crossover now most important for a crossover is you try and identify the medial most border of the left rectus muscle here you try and identify the junction of posterior rectus sheath to the linea alba 
and give a small cut and extend it cranially and cordially just to identify the falciform uh, ligament this is identified as a yellow white structure which looks like something like loose alveolar tissue now once you are in the falciform ligament try and go as anterior possible as near to linea alba and try and uh, be flush to it do not damage linea alba and try and go on to opposite side now a good thing is you will see in video that i have caused fenestration but good thing is that you try and uh, dissect more little pre peritoneal so do not try and go horizontal but try and go more towards the anterior abdominal wall at one point you will try and see some change in color linea alba looks glistening white while when you are trying to go below the right posterior sheet the rectus muscle which is anterior to it gives a little brownish color so that that color appears little either reddish reddish to brown and you can make a small nick once you identify that you have you are identifying the muscle after opening the rectus sheet you can insert where this here at this junction if you have a hook you insert into the hook inside in that right rectus place and come as medial as possible so that you try and cut the right posterior rectus sheet as near the linea alba as possible now the uh, right rectus plane is done then you try and go uh, lower cut the posterior rectus sheet as near as the linea alba on both sides i uh, identify the hernia reduce the content then go and have a inframlical crossover once this is done it is imperative that whatever contents are you go inside the abdomen check for any of the injuries if you have created for any of the contents if not then you uh, once this is done you see whether the flaps can come if you can close the flap if they lower the pressure and try and suture the flap now there are the, many people will say that you you try and suture the anterior sheet first many people will say will do the posterior it doesn't matter until unless you close the posterior sheet in a air tight fashion so that your mesh should not get exposed to the intestine and you close your anterior sheet if you can close it if the defect is smaller than 6 cm because above that you possibly cannot close the anterior sheet defect so once this is done the you confirm the hemostasis and then you deploy the mesh now question about drains many people would still try and put drains drains are controversial they all these patients can have still small seromas uh, many surgeon so, would still any advocate. surgeon would still advocate Samir Hello? sir, sorry, Haan. sorry for the interruption. Ha. Samir. Ha. Ha. Bola bola sir. Ha. Bola bola sir. No, the the uh, lecture is going on wonderful, but then uh, people would Haan. like to have all these I, explanations with I, the video as well. After this is the video. After Immediately this is the video. video. Immediately yeah. is the video. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Ha. Right. No, I am just clarifying sir. Then we. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can understand that. This is, uh, this will be followed by the practical. Wonderful. Yes. yes. So yeah. we'll just so come to the video. We'll just come to the video. We'll, yeah. We'll, this forty-eight year old lady. Forty-eight year old lady with irreducible primary umbilical hernia. Uh, the, on examination, she had a ballooned up omento seal. She had no comorbidities. BMI of thirty-two, and USG picked up a defect somewhere between two to three centimeters in size. Now this is not going to be a port position. What you see on the top side is the cranial end. Uh, you can see the defect which has been marked. The vertical lines they are not exactly vertical. They have to be con convexing outwards. They are linear semilunar. So the 10 millimeter what has been shown is the optical trocar. Once this is done, there are two uh, 5 millimeter ports you can see on the left side of the patient. Now first is all these ports are placed the under vision. and before inserting you always try and put a needle which is fitted to a syringe with saline and mark it why because accidentally you should not enter with a 5 mm inside peritoneum this is most important thing you try and decrease all chances of creating pneumo peritoneum okay the 5 mm what you are seeing on the right side which is, which i use uh, which i put after uh, doing most of the steps is only for suturing okay so now we'll start with our video so this is what uh, the whereby the arrow is there uh, the is the head end 
this is the uh, foot end so you can see that uh, you can see the antiretractor sheath been seen that s shaped retractor helps you and once it is done the, the it is split the posterior sheath and this is what we go with the trocar inside and you can see the cockpit appearance as what you see in a regular tp now these are again two and four movements the mind well we are trying to go cranially we are on the left side so to your all right side is going to be right side rotation left side left side the dissections goes and tries and bear, bear the posterior sheath so anywhere you are seeing the, you should not see muscle at all if you are trying to see muscle you are going to be in wrong plane try and keep all fascia anteriorly or superiorly to your telescope see up till now we are using a zero degrees you can see a end on you you can see good amount of space mare now this area where i am going to put my first stoker now you will be able to see the syringe coming in so you you are marked the linea pre operatively the oh this is what a vc port would do i think the, 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 the editing is gone inside already so this is how the syringe is put the toka this is, this is a exact dissection what we use with the uh, ultra cision which is a good instrument here but at times uh, overrated now you can see uh, left retrorectus dissection going way down up to the cave of regius this is a small clip i just wanted to show vc port that's why now once this is the ports are done now first working port now we are come to first video the first working port has come somewhere in left left side uh, hypochondriac region now this comes the important thing is uh, i would user usually use a plain uh, trocars but many uh, surgeon would try and use a ring trocar or the self lutening so that they do not come out i do not prefer them because at times you try and put uh, excess force to push them inside the space you have to be extremely careful when you are pushing in because you may inadvertently cause injury to the posterior sheath and cause fenestration of the posterior sheath leading to pneumoperitoneum now dissection starts at as near as the posterior sheath many a time you are right now working only with one hand so try and achieve hemostasis if you are if you are any scanning in this area you are going to lose your plane your obscure your plane so try and achieve be patient take small small bite the main the principle is try and create a good plane so that you identify medial most border of the left rectus muscle as well as the lateral most border taking care you do not damage any of the neurovascular bundle so uh, achieve hemostasis at each and every point the many people have used uh, i have used hook also so the uh, instruments are not important the methodology is important the principle is important achieve hemostasis at at each and every point and to gain whatever the principle you want to attain now you are you guys are seeing lot many uh, vessels going down so try and achieve all these muscles should be, uh, vessels should remain on to the uh, rectus muscle so if you can achieve hemostasis the it's preferable at the same time but try and push them all with blunt dissection so they go more superiorly as possible so this is what a dissection would proceed uh, from cranial to caudal once the dissection is done you can see this lateral side here in this video i have not gone as caudal as possible i reach somewhere to the level of the arcuate line they are trying to dissect because usually after the arcuate line you have to be more careful there because the peritoneum dips down so at times you may just lose a plane so it's extremely important when you have come somewhere level of arcuate line you know your plane exactly well because this is a area where the, the linear the, the inferior pericardium are going to come as lateral as possible and at times you may damage inferior pericardium also so try and here there are no attempts made to identify where the hernia will be where the defect will be or where the content will be so the important thing is the hernias do not lie in this space these are primary umbilical hernias so they are going to be lie in the defect of the linea alba so try and create a good amount of space which is relatively a vascular uh, and a good exposure here we come more cranial so this is the advantage advan here would be advantage of optical trocar because it, it you can come as high as possible and visualize even the most proximal part here we can see my I, even if i withdraw my to the telescope 
I am not been able to see where my the most cranial most part of the PRS lies. Now this is a point where I am going to have a crossover. As I for that, I require one more working port, which is usually taken about six to seven centimeters caudal to my first working port in the line of linear symmetries. Again, marking with a syringe confirmation. Here we do not use saline; we use local, so as to give the, the we we can in, in, uh, give some local analysis at two area. Uh, again, the trocar when you are going going to be patient, do not thrust in because they are sharp trocars which can cause fenestration into the posterior sheath. Now, extremely important here, you can see one uh, forceps coming which is blunt, and right side, right hand working portrait is using a hook. Uh, important thing is uh, this sectoral vision. Uh, if you have a good bipolar instrument uh, which can take care of small small tissues. uh you you can use on the left side but you should be proficient in using right side monopolar current and left side uh, bipolar so which can so you can have hemose in each and every point so this is advantage if you had a visi port at this point you would be able to see without me withdrawing the trocar and so this is how high is extremely important when you are thinking of achieving a crossover try and come high as high as possible because you do not know how big or how long would be the falciform so this is how you go as medial as possible so as near as the linea alba try and cut the posterior sheath so small small bites go don't do not hurry do not thrust in because immediately below would lie the peritoneum you do not want to cause any fenestration into the peritoneum whatsoever which will cause ballooning of peritoneum and adding to the difficulty any 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 uh, difficulties so this this is how we go more as far as we become more bold and we identify the, the we cut the posterior sheath as near to the linea alba so all you should be taking small small bites don't hurry don't you should not become impatient because any any impatience will cause the increased difficulty at a later step so this is how the falciform comes into picture it it looks like exactly like fat the, so it's extra peritoneal fat now uh, now as we have identified where the linea is so i am trying to go as near as possible most people would try and use a cutting current now you can see the the falciform is being teased of the the from the linea alba the some blunt dissection and you would see some impatience on my part i thought this is the right side posterior sheath and that's how i caused some fenestration into the peritoneum i was lucky enough so i had identified i you can understand this that this is shining and this at times looks little brownish which i missed it but luckily for me i could still manage doing a e tap here i crossed the crossover and i could identify the right posterior so again i made a fenestration and with the help help of dog i tried to come as medial as possible the only wrong thing i did is i tried to go horizontal to identify right posterior sheet uh, right posterior sheet where i had to go more anterior as well now again the same same principle try and bear the uh, right posterior sheet create a wider plane be as near as to the medial border of the posterior sheath i be near the linea alba do not damage linea alba do not cause fenestration in any of the peritoneum the, the falciform or even the posterior sheath achieve hemose each and every point because that will keep the planes clear and you understand so once the the space has been done adequately the left hand gives traction the there the, the traction had to be given more only because the there was some uh, gas inside the peritoneum you can see we are separating peritoneum from the linea alba and you can have a good plane so do not have only sharp dissection use ju judicious uh, mondiatomy whenever required so uh, you understand that we are trying to be as near as linea alba so that when you are going to finally suture it that uh, that's going to be the area which is going to cover the uh, give a cover for our polypropylene or whatever uh, mesh we are going to use in a retromuscular space 
so as we go accordingly still we have no the placement where our uh, uh, hernia would be so the dissection goes as cordial as possible on both sides so you can see a glistening the nice glistening lean alba you can appreciate it's quite wide which we possible as open surgeons did, uh, at least i did not understand it is this wide when we i used to do uh, open uh, laparotomies so as we go down we i'm i'm not making any attempts to go as lateral as possible because those lateral dissection would be beneficial when when i am trying to think about suturing so that, that this is the time right now for me to create a good amount of space go as lower as possible now this is the area which i can identify as the defect so now i will try and go on to the posterior sheath on both sides so i identify this is a case of irreducible hernia so the contents are still inside the, the clinically it looks like omentoseal though i i the, it can still be a, a transverse colon or a part of knuckle of bowel inside it so attempts are made here to open the sac this is how you open the sac now this is a main apprehension on my part for doing this repair because there can still be bowel and we use diathermy or water sharp dissection which can cause injury to the content if it's intestine so this is what the only apprehension what i have got doing the etep for any of the irreducible hernias so the for that i can recommend another procedure but this is a good procedure if you can still be careful now it all attempts right now to decrease uh, reduce the hernial contents the were unsuccessful so the prs on both sides were taken down the abdomen was open so now it cannot remain endoscopic now it is endolaparoscopic repair so adhesions to the, the omentum to the sac the were the separated and gentle attempts to give a pull with external compression was and you can see that somebody is giving external compression pull and push method still failed so the, the right rectus sheath was dissected cordially you do not require lot many diathermies so again be close to the, the linea alba uh, cut post rectus sheath so as as linea near to it so as to give you can have good uh, gas going inside giving good amount of pneumoperitoneum gas enter the sac allows the, the contents to come down now you can visualize my right hand as uh, bipolar because because of pull and push there may be some bleeding in the from the omentum so achieve hemostasis at that end itself now you can see the sac getting inverted the actually this is a sac because the sac has been taken down so when you are seeing i palm the sac uh, does not get separate from prs however in etep because we have cut the sac from all sides sac remains up so sac has been separated so you can visualize the sac has been inverted you can see the defect now confirm hemostasis at each and every point and then only reposit the contained so uh, it's extremely important that once you reposit then it may be and it keeps on bleeding it may be extremely difficult to relocalize the point of bleeding or you may have to open the post rectus sheath in a bigger way so you you can visualize you can you have done a so superior crossover you have reduced the hernia and the, you have confirmed hemostasis achieve right rectus rectus the spaces on both sides somewhere above the level of arcuate line on both sides you can have a visual impression that the bladder is coming bladder or the possible urethras is coming up to the level of the defect and you have to be right now more careful doing a posterior uh, or a infraumbilical crossover uh, so we start with the infraumbilical crossover now the easier way here is to dissect a part of urethras or the bladder and then try and cut the posterior sheath this is how you do the attempts are made to try and set the urethras from the sac so that you you have it separated now if i try and dissect either side on the uh, posterior sheath i may traumatize the linea alba that's why it, this is a easy, easier way you identify this has been see you can see you can see this is separated and now we are separate you, know, you see you can see separating this is a posterior sheath being cut so now you know exactly where the posterior sheath is there the bladder is separated and linea alba is preserved the, and the, any damage to it has been prevented so you can see a linea alba which is on to the anterior side the bladder is getting separated here you are seeing the right posterior sheath this this is the left posterior sheath 
his right posterior sheep and the glistening linea alba rise in center so try and avoid any damage to linea alba in in whatever manner it should not cause damage which will cause further added problems to the patient so the, the achieve so you uh, the dissection goes quarterly so in, in any doubt you can still dissect further down and then only cut the posterior sheath as close as to linea alba to have a inferior crossover so hemostasis at each and every point mind well when you are dissecting this this is again a periperitoneal so this also can be used as a cover so th this is how your left posterior sheath has been taken down you can see the bladder you you have be very careful stay on the posterior sheath the uh, branches of the inferior epigastric can come there as be real possible so try and be on the you can see the peritoneum been dissected here you this is a peritoneum with a bladder the right posterior sheath been cut as near the linea alba so as to create a good the uh, inframlical crossover and a good space now the, the dissection is very near the posterior sheath till the level of the arcuate line and below that it goes very near to the uh, peritoneum as what most of the surgeons would be doing for a total extrapedal repair for inguinal hernia now here you should be extremely careful that the inferior epigastric now you can see some twi twigs of inferior epigastric coming in picture you have to be extremely careful that inferior epigastric should lie on the roof so the dissection should proceed as close to peritoneum and you should not get deviated just because you are doing the same dissection from a farther off for as named to be etp so go try and achieve hemostasis go near the peritoneum take the twigs off see to that inferior epigastric lie on to the roof try and achieve hemostasis try and the have sharp and blunt dissection good traction counter traction mechanism to achieve and confirmation of planes and try and push the all the other structures away the when in doubt visualize understand what what you are dealing with and then only you know, cook and then cut the any of those important structures this is the dissection on the left side the the, the near the linea seminalis going into the, the cave of regius again the dissection move into the cave of regius the going down we are we will possibly identify the lighthouse in short time so this is how it goes and here you can see the, the lower flap being pulled which is looks inadequate for me to suture it has to be absolute tensionless so dissection is further done down now in all etps you need not go below the level of bladder going up to the uh, uh, at least 3 cm below the cooper's ligament as what is done for the uh, tap for inguinal hernia you can visualize the inferior epigastric tendon and here comes the superior epigastric and the lighthouse which allows the posterior uh, the lower flap which becomes loose which can be brought up superiorly and can be amenable for suturing now once this is amenable for suturing here is the posterior the i introduce the fourth post uh, fourth port which is in the right side epigastrium in the right retrocess plane the the horizontal suturing looks uh, very easy here we are using a uh, 20 pds here the we didn't have we had uh, absorbable uh, bath suture bath suture be becomes easier because there is no need to take knot and you can just take sutures all along and pull at one go which can be uh, which are unidirectional so uh, even with pneumoperitoneum or whatever uh, tension also the edges of the sutured area can come together and you can have a good amount of closure so the, when you are doing this you require to take a little longer suture so you the, the surgeon as well as the camera surgeon should be oriented because uh, you should not create knots while doing the suturing in a continuous fashion which will add to your further problems so a good way is this pds is monofilament you can take multiple bites and pull at one go because it can come now important thing is you need not take large bites on the prs but uh, if if you think they are not confident you can take even the peritoneum so as to have a tensionless suture so once you are done you this is a triangular suturing you can have one 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 port in right side one left side which has been taken care the, the to suture the posterior rectus sheath as well as what is the peritoneal defect which had been caused the anterior defect we sutured 
with uh, the bab suture uh, there is no conflict of interest but this is number one uh, strata fix this is the good suture P pdp material which has come with block so it does not have a eye so you need not pass so you can just pull it it is uh, the spice are very really nice they can really hold on and uh, you can you usually take small small bites while doing uh, posterior suture you must have seen the forehand suture but while doing the uh, suturing on the anteroabdominal wall it's always preferable you suture with backhand uh, so if you are going with forehand your the needle tip may not be able to be visualized only because the tip comes the instrument will come in the way of the tip and uh, the needle so uh, good backhand suturing now once the defect has been done you can see we, we are still trying to reinforce some sutures onto the linea the, onto the dia so called whatsoever diastasis of the linea so as to give good cosmesis now this if you are trying to do with extra uh, corporeal multiple interrupted sutures may not be very good in cosmesis because then the subcutaneous fat starts bulging when you and put them together so this is how you do for a uh, uh, intercorporeal suturing this suture material you do need not tie, put a knot you have to just take two sutures backwards so that these the uh, whatever stress it will not allow to go back now this is what i was trying to tell about the sectoral suturing the the two lower ports we are trying to use for the fenestration initially caused by me when we are trying to have a crossover onto the superior side so take good amount of bites being new, the, the pneumoperitoneum there is hardly any chance that bowel will pop off when you are trying to suture this is uh, a bab suture material so try and take good bites and have a good uh, gasless or the waterproof suture so that your mesh does not get exposed to the the intestines or omentum to have any adhesions okay last would be the mesh deployment what it would be the i have not said measuring but you measure the, the defect from one linea to another linea you need not put a mesh from zephy sternum to uh, to the, the cave of sergius so the, we usually vertically roll the mesh and it is uh, deployed as open uh the, it's not necessary that uh, you require to fix fix this mesh because it's a created space but uh, i usually try and fix this mesh at two points at least why because if by chance there is some prs rupture at least that part of prs should hold on to the bowel at uh, prs should hold on to the mesh so that prs should not retract and would not cause <coughs> that much uh, exposure of uh, mesh to the bowel so this is what i would think of so the i i did a shortcut i uh, that pack suture material available which are packed there so i fixed the mesh at two points these are not very deep bite they are just taken just so as that mesh should stay at that point the now once this is done we confirm the hemostasis the uh, if the patient was anticoagulant hypertensive uncontrolled previously then i may still put drains but otherwise i would not put drains confirming hemostasis confirming the deployment of mesh is nice the, the gas is released in a slow fashion so it causes slow desufflation so that gas from the peritoneum also comes out and we have a good mesh deployment deployed in the retromuscular area and that space gets obliterated in under vision so that uh, we understand that mesh is been deployed at the right place in the right fashion so this is what i would think of uh you have any feedbacks if time does not permit you can send email or whatsapp me i i am free to answer i am free to answer even now if time permits uh, <clears throat> dr samir yes sir hello yes sir yeah it yes, was sir. a uh, yes sir great presentation and uh, uh as we all know you your pace of surgery and your pace of lecture also uh matches and it is really difficult for us to keep the pace with it uh but still i think it was one of the best lectures i have heard on uh, the e tape for ventral hernia uh i i have personally few uh, questions uh one thing is uh, you started suturing this uh, uh, linea alba <coughs> from below upwards 
is it hello hello what is the what is the cranial extent of suturing of this linea alba sir uh, it sir, depends uh, it depends yeah. basically it basically, depends on whether depends patient on whether has diastasis so if you have if patient has diastasis the and uh, it's a cranial diastasis to your defect i would start initially with closure of defect and it continues superiorly or the cranially now once at at one given point my uh, Samir sir, Samir sir, Yogesh, he is not audible. Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Samir, very Hello. sorry to interrupt, but uh, for last few sentences you were not audible. I will come back. So, yeah. So we start from uh, the defect, and it, the 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 cranial extension would go depending on what the diastasis would be. So uh, we start from the defect, the caudal most end. and we continue as cranial as possible when we come the higher than umbilicus somewhere about 4 to 5 3 to 4 cm my triangular whatever uh, attenuation has i uh, triangulation has been done to suture it becomes extremely difficult as i go further cranially to suture the diastasis so as to give a good cosmesis now if my clinical uh, impression wants me to do further cranially i may have to put another fifth port either on to the lower right side visualize my port uh, change my optics and change my working port so that my entire vision goes from lower to up and suture from lower to up so that now i go from nearer to farther way in suturing do you understand sir akur sir yeah Sir, I have muted you. Just unmute yourself, sir. Thakur, sir. Yeah, uh, it was very clear, uh, yes, and still uh, uh, there are uh, questions in the mind of uh, the attendees whether one should do it for uh, the defects as small as two to three centimeters, or is there any way to learn it? Uh, maybe starting with the smaller defects. what is your uh, suggestion to people who would like to learn this technique so uh, very so, frankly uh, very frankly uh, i would not advocate this procedure for a hernia defect less than 3 cm why because if i have to put a mesh for a 3 cm and i have to dissect from zephy sternum to cave of redgers it is it may spell for disaster second important thing usually when we are attempting this do i have told you that we you should be prepared for uh, putting a eye palm uh, most of the times we are not prepared for it because our surgeon's ego does not allow us to do it so third important thing yeah, when we are trying to do initially and we try and go little farther on to the posterior sheath near the defect it becomes at times difficult if, to suture if the edges have gone farther away in supraumbilical area so if you want to really attempt e tap for a ventral hernia you should attempt one in a primary um, umbilical hernia second it preferably a female who is multiparous because they have little wider or lax the rectus muscle so you they have little wider linear uh, distance between both linea so they may be little amenable for suturing at times Uh, more than three, from three centimeters to six centimeters, it is little, relatively easier. So uh, this is a good procedure. However, the, I always feel up till now, whatever procedures I have done, I have at least I have converted to IPOM in three patients. For one in patient where I could not uh, understand where the postnatal sheath is because of incisional hernia, and two patients they were irreducible. and uh, it was extremely difficult for me to reduce them so then i had to literally go in abdomen and then reduce it so if you are doing there is another uh, procedure called trans abdominal retromuscular if you want i can uh, demonstrate that procedure next time 
which it, what i showed etp was uh, something like tp hello hello uh, what i showed etp something like tp you are totally blind and what what i spoke right now is tam tarm that is trans abdominal retromuscular which you go inside visualize and do a nearly similar procedure so which for any learner is much much easier to do so you have wider space good triangulations so that if you want i can put it next time because it becomes much much easier once you do tam can be done easy can be done easy okay do you want to suggest that probably probably if you start with uh, tam uh, the procedure of e type might become little easy uh, after 4 to 5 uh, cases or so sir basically in tam you to develop a prs in hospital but finally the dissection would remain same now it is similar to what for a laparoscopic inguinal hernia was said tapp is easier than tp uh, when i learned i learned tp directly so i would not say that but for a surgeon uh, understanding landmarks becomes much easier reducing contents become much easier under vision than what you just saw so at times you may cause injury and for a beginner if for first one or two cases he creates some panic situation for him uh, he will be taken back from a good procedure which can he can easily do Uh, in his later career so that so because of injury he should not go back on any procedure that's where i feel that the uh, he should know all procedures and then select what is better for him so the uh, easier procedure would be tam to understand so uh, a beginner should get well versed with suturing understand planes and possibly he should he can do a e tape also it is not that very difficult at all but i would still recommend if you want to start uh, it's a female multi paras primary umbilical hernias no previous scars they will be the very good cases to start or maybe a infra umbilical primary hernia which we not very commonly seen but preferably only midline hernias akur sir please unmute there is a lot of echo when your mic is, uh, mic is unmute. Uh, unmute. so i mute it yeah. so i mute it uh, thanks a lot uh, samir for uh, explaining this procedure wonderfully and uh, i now uh, hand over the proceedings to yogesh and uh, uh, to dr jain for his comments and uh, any queries of any attendees thank you thank you sir 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 dr prakash please yeah so i think you made a difficult procedure look very easy actually and uh, oh is it uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, i mean it's not uh, it's not easy by any uh, any standards i just want to know if you get bleeding from the inferior epigastric um, having dissected all the way to there are you happy to clip or just to uh, uh, very frankly, would you just ultrasonic that that is precisely i said there are two essentials in initially uh, all instruments are okay one is good needle holder and second is good bipolar i i would trust more bipolar then a clip clip will be difficult because my ports are 10 110 and maybe 2 or 3 5 so a 5 mm going and clipping a bleeding inferior epigastric vessel is going to be extremely difficult because first i have to convert to a 10 because most clip applicators what we have are 10 so it's preferable i would believe in my bipolar which can usually coagulate inferior epigastric very well so that's where i said the essentials for this surgery may not be a harmonic but a good bipolar that's what my initial there are two extremely important a good needle holder which will take care of most of my problems right thanks thank you for that yeah uh, from uh, audience first is dr prashant rahate sir please ask yes. your questions yes samir Thank, thank yes, you very sir. much for Good accepting evening. our. Good evening. Thank you, Samir, for accepting our uh, invitation for this particular webinar. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, I have. Ah, uh, okay. Bara bara. Don question. Pahle ta, how do you close the? Uh, how do you close the port? The bigger port. And the second question. Many times you come across such a situation that uh, first time delivery LSCS. 
young female not sure whether she wants a second issue or not and she has a umbilical hernia and lacks abdomen how will you manage uh extremely good question sir uh i'll answer the first uh first the port usually i try and put with open insertion so it's a usually 11 millimeter insertion for a 10 millimeter port which can be easily seen with as s retractors however uh, if you if i really know that uh, dr chobe et al uh, tried to put uh, they usually try and do uh, tap procedure by taking about 13 millimeter incision in the left side for a regular hassans uh, and after doing that they try and take two sutures on either side which are used to hold the hassans and close the defect after the procedure which can be done but here the in supramlical in epigastric area uh, whatever obese patient usually with that incision you should be able to visualize your anterior sheath which can be sutured so the which usually i try and use uh, the 2826 vicryl but now a similar kind of uh, needle uh, pds is also available uh, possibly from uh, johnson and johnson uh, second question uh, if uh, you you have to do a e tap for uh, the, a lady who has umbilical hernia uh, possibly wanting second uh, issue uh, i would first uh, counsel the patient if she wants a second issue and she's not very symptomatic i will tell that uh, let her complete family and come back however if it is irreducible and most commonly they have some uh, diastasis with it i would counsel them that after surgery they would have some issues uh, of having other recurrent hernia or some problems with the hernia repair after whatever we do now more uh, commonly when we try and do this repair the with diastasis it's not only the uh, di dis uh, elongation of linea it is elongation of recta also so muscles also lax the anterior and posterior sheath are lax so you have a wider the space in both of uh, retroactor spaces and a wider linea alba so now usually we have to manage in a similar fashion we try and go down that we'll do the retroactors on one side have a crossover now crossover at times may not be very easy you may have you may have perforations of per peritoneum mind well in these such patients with lax this the falciform appears to be very small because because of that laxity of abdomen so you have to go much much cranial to have a crossover when you do have a good crossover and do on the other side and do and enter the reduction of hernia and you it the prs is not going to be a problem because they are extremely lax however when you are trying to suture anti abdominal wall it's extremely important you may have to put one or two extra ports and do a uh, suturing way high up up to the epic epi sternum to have a good cosmetic effect onto the diastasis otherwise what will happen the lower abdomen will become tight and supra umbilical the diastasis will be splayed up which will look cosmetically very awful so you have to be very careful that you try and go as high as cranial and take sutures plicating sutures on a linear so that you can have a good cosmesis so that both rectus muscle come anteriorly also together so in these patients i would try and suture the anterior defects first and then go for posterior defect because once you close the anterior sheath the linear linear seminus will also come a little nearer and then you can close the post rectus sheath nearer because depending on post rectus sheath you are trying to uh, measure your mesh if you try and measure mesh in a wider way, it, the bigger mesh is going to go inside and cause crumpling. Yeah, thank you. Is, and what do you do about lax skin? What in? Lax skin, what do you do for that? Right now, nothing. Usually, it should get accommodated because it's not that we are, uh, it, it's not that it's just popping out. It should just accommodate after some time. Usually, it accommodates after two, two and a half months. It should not have problems. Thank you. Thank you, Samir, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant, sir. Next is Dr. Pravin Patil, sir, from Akola. Sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Pravin, sir. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good My evening. question is, 
if the defect in anterior rectocity is more than 6 cm how to close it it is extremely difficult to close because uh, that that is a problem that, that, that's why you are required to put reinforcement so that in such patients usually the mesh is fixed onto the anti abdominal wall so you can take multiple sutures which are transsural sutures on sides you mark the area and you can fix onto the anti abdominal wall it becomes extremely difficult to close defects more than 6 cm in the anterior sheath then we have to do open surgery then uh, see you can do open surgeries the basically the, the indication for open surgery if you have a very lax skin you have scarred skin or your your hernia which has come up to the skin where you require to take out that skin you have to do open surgery you have loss of domain and you want to do a laparoscopic repair is going to be tedious going to take 3 3 and a half hours which is going to be tiresome for you tiresome for anesthetist and uh, further men may increase the time so it can be problematic for patient also so if you have loss of domains if your defects more more than 6 to 8 cm in size it is preferable that you start doing open surgeries sir next question is pravin sir hello pravin sir hello pravin yes. sir please one question per person pravin because we have okay, many okay. hands we you can okay. note down the whatsapp number of samir sir you can okay. directly message him sir please okay okay i will send okay. him yeah sorry so our next question is dr sunil mapari sir one question per person sunil sir oh okay good evening samir sir good evening good evening chan maje ali jase tumhi बँकेट मध्ये मजा आणता मजा करता तशी तुमची सदरी बघताना आनंद झाला सर देशन इन दू दॅट ऑल्सो वी कॅन पुट द स्कोप अँड वी कॅन व्हिजुलाइज द कंटेंट ऑफ द सॅक व्हेरी फ्रँकली लेवल ऑफ परफोरेशन सो इट मे कॉज फर्दर ऍडेड प्रॉब्लेम्स one so it is the if uh, commonly if the, the method suggested if you have irreducible hernias you can do a laparoscopy from palmer's point go inside identify and put one or two ports more reduce contents and then do a that's what i said so okay if if you have to do that it going to be a some problem so it is preferable that uh, the it is preferable that we try and the do a tam because going inside and coming back outside again is going to be tedious so then why not to do through abdomen only and do uh, do a extrapedal repair yes okay prashant bahut hai sir thank you sunil sir prashant bahut hai next question please hello ha ah, prashant bol kaise hai sir corona corona अरे दुआ तेरी यार तेरी देखा मैं एनिवर्सरी हो गया ना तेरा <laughs> सर एक सिंपल थेरोटिकल क्वेश्चन आई वांट टू आस्क बोल बोल इफ यू इफ देयर इज अ थेरी पेपर एंड इट सेज डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन आई पॉम एंड ई टेप इन फोर पॉइंट्स फोर और फाइव पॉइंट व्हाट इज नंबर ऑफ पोर्ट्स डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन आई पॉम एंड ई टेप थेरोटिकल क्वेश्चन थेरी पेपर में आया यू हैव टू मेक टू कॉलम्स राइट one is number of ports second is mesh third is cost four is time fifth is complication sixth is patient and what is your inference hmm. see what will I you say personally, i personally don't feel that one extra port or two extra ports would matter in any laparoscopic surgery so ports i would leave apart because in ipom also usually are done by three ports but if you have to do for a bigger uh, defect and you have to fix from the contralateral side you may have to put extra ports one second was what mesh 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 you require a dual mesh for i pom which is extremely costly and you are exposing that mesh to the intestine whatever the the company may tell that yeah, you may not have adhesions you may have no, no problems but whatever is and done there can be still chances because you are putting a prosthesis in contact with intestine and omentum which possibly a uh, etep does not do we use a polypropylene mesh which we are using day in and day out for all inval hernias so and it does not come in contact with the any of the viscera 
if you have taken proper precautions of closing all fenestrations and the posterior defect two the third sir, is sir, you do sir, not sir, sir, here here i would like to just interrupt now huh. you said that you need to have a dual mesh also ready right i would keep now, as a troubleshooting right right right, right. no forget km you work in private practice also hmm when the patient first comes to you in the opd how will you give an estimate to the patient or how will you convince to the patient ki nahi you have to keep a dual i am using an e tape because dual mesh cost is more tacker cost is more now if i want to do an e tape i have to keep a dual mesh also ready how will you give a proper estimate and how that patient will have a confidence in a surgeon that it is going to be done right or wrong or what because the patient is very confused now you have to keep dual mesh also ready so i will tell i will test pros and cons of both okay second thing after telling that you have to always tell that we i am going to dissect in these layers however it is patient's anatomy i cannot guarantee from outside i would do all efforts that i have to put do a etap however if it is incisional hernia because of previous surgery it may be stuck and i may not be able to separate from metatarsal muscle and it may be a thinned out peritoneum so you have to see yeah finally whatever send done whatever procedure do you have to be safe for you and for your patient yes. so that they do not come back with some complication and you have to deal or somebody else deals for you and creates a bad name for you so yeah you have to convince you have to tell counsel them in a clear way and i personally feel if you tell a patient and he understands you that you are doing a right thing for him he will get convinced okay now coming to that again differentiation time how how much Fixation time does not, because this this procedure okay. in ipom nah. would have nah. taken half an hour except e how much time it takes one and a half hour one and a half hour or maybe two hours complete accepted accepted so in fact in my presentation only i told you that this is but going to be time i got it sir because i work in a private setup most of the surgeons in vidarbha surgeons have their own nursing home but in a corporate setup it is hourly charged the ot time is hourly charged so i was coming to the next what is the surgeon fees hmm. if the surgeon fees and the time required it takes it's approximately same. upon the cost of the mesh then why not hmm. i know no no i agree na see so first i will now show you that if you are doing tackling up to 4 cm you can very well do ipom plus up to 6 cm you can do ipom plus there is no problem only only issue okay. is see when you are when you are talking about mesh now wait for some few more months and everybody will come with gypsas and possibly you will come from ipom to e tape trust me yeah. yes yes <laughs> i am trying it sir thank you prashant you tried few sir. plus yeah prashant sir you have a question hello prashant sir sir sir, sir. samir sir one ah. word about tapp plus which can be done by people kon si baat kar raha hai tapp plus kya hota hai hello sir there is lot of disturbance probably hmm. hello yeah Yogesh, you can go to another person. I talk to him later. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, Ravin. Yeah. yeah. We have Vikas Jain, sir. He has a question. Vikas, sir. Uh, Vikas, sir. Where did he go? He was here itself. Now. Yeah, Vikas Jain, sir. Vikas, sir, please ask your question. Ah, uh, please unmute me. Hello, Samir. You are yes. unmute only. Ah. Ah, ah. Maza aaya, boss. Very big. Thank, Thank you. you. i have a very small question uh, in all hmm. the case of e tap you dissect from subzifoid up to the space of rigidus yes is it uh, necessary to dissect this uh, complete dissection see issue is uh, if you try and you put your optical port below then uh, to hmm. have a crossover superior is not possible because the crossover superiorly has to be at the above uh, level above the level of insertion of falciform so you remain in extra peritoneal plane above the falciform and go to opposite contralateral opposite rectus sheath post rectus, rectus sheath so, so that's where precisely you can you cannot go the below a level of the zephy sternum 
now question is if you, if you are doing a bottom up up bottom up approach you can do it but uh, uh, confirmation that you are in extrapenoid space by that method becomes at times difficult and you are totally differently oriented doing it the important thing is when you are doing uh, from bottom up approach finally you have to go cranially and when you are going to suture cranially and if you are cause a defect a uh, little wider on the prospective sheet uh, it becomes extremely difficult for anyone uh, uh, for anyone to understand uh, try and suture it okay uh, and what is the size of mesh you advocate means uh, in ipom we uh, what we is 5 cm uh, from all the side of the defect that is the size of mesh we usually kept so in uh, this uh, etap what is the size of mesh usually see this is a uh, sublay mesh so it's a mesh place the before the defect common by common thing is usually the ratio should be 16 by 1 so you or at least you should have the coverage the lateral cover of at least 3 cm from all sides for a retromuscular area now issue is the if you are dissecting from the sternum to the somewhere near in coverages laterally the extension should be from one linear to another which can be measured which possibly somewhere between 15 to 20 cm so you require a mesh which is one side 20 cm vertically it should be it can, it is usually 20 cm or more so for that you we are going to open one mesh which is 30 by 30 cm because that lesser okay. than that mesh is not available which can be placed which is one side 20 another in 15 so you will open either way open a macroporous mesh which is 30 by 30 cm in size and okay. print that whatever size you want okay in any case uh, if we have to go for lateral dissection then how to do means whether we have to convert to tar it has to be tar it has to be tar i didn't this it was not in my purview otherwise i shown tar in ex, this extension of this because for okay. lateral hernias or if Uh, the yeah, after you saw in my at two places i tried to pull my the flap and see whether they are coming if they are not coming then you try and go as at the possible and identify linea semilunaris if still also you can't do then you can't compromise those nerves so you have to cut posterior sheath in that level some little medial to the insertion of those nerves and go if you going away from the nerves go as lateral as possible go in a plane where you The cut the the inferior lamella of the internal oblique, identify transverse abdominis and cut. Now that would be another big lecture to tell you exactly what layer it is, which I can take if you want permit me. Thank you, Vikas sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank Ravindra Telkar sir. Last question today, Ravindra Telkar sir. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Good evening, Samir. Good evening, sir. अरे excellent presentation. एक तानो खूब कठिन वाटला video बगता तोड़ा सोपा वाटला. अत आठ क्या तोड़ा सोपा पता नहीं किसका साइड पे जगड़े आ रही है ऐसा. अत्ता नहीं अत्ता कोरोना है. कोरोना डबल आते हैं. अत्ता कोटा रे. अत इलेक्ट्रिक चालू वाला नहीं हम ची. हाँ हाँ नहीं presentation अतिशय सुंदर. मैं ये लेखा इस तुझे करें शिक्षा ला. नक्की नक्की जस आपण प्रकाशर प्लीज yeah i think uh, thank you sir for an excellent demonstration and description of a newish procedure i think the best patients that we can try on are those who are already agreed to have a small eye pump put and then we can attempt etep if it doesn't work you still have a uh, get out of jail card with the eye pump mesh still available yes. i think that's what we have done so thank you again thank you thank you thank you samir sir thakur sir thank you yogesh या थैंक यू सॉरी थोड़ा सा ये गड़बड़ हो गया हमारा मोबाइल का बट आई थिंक आई हैव मैनेज या या वी मैनेज हां यू हैव 
to have generated so much of uh, interest amongst these uh, surgeons that you will have to cover the other two remaining lectures as well that is e tech with tar i will tam and then tar yeah so give us a suitable date so that we can organize yogesh to yes, note sir. please yeah, yeah yeah please thanks a lot we'll do that. we have a lot of time we'll do it <laughs> <laughs> if there is no time then we'll ask our chief minister to extend the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> thank you i should thank yeah. vidarbha association vikas yogesh yogesh bichara kitna baar mere ko phone kiya usne bichara he is he is more trouble guy than me bichara i should <laughs> thank him main yeah. backbone yogesh is doing a wonderful job by organizing this webinar and yeah, no. uh, He could give me trouble shooting. I now I did not know what to do with when audio is closed. He suddenly gave me a link on WhatsApp. This something uh, innovative. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate. Thank you. So Whatever much. answer you need is the master, Yogesh. <laughs> yes, yes. Accept, accept, accept. Sir, sir, अभी late हो गया ना सर चलो good night sir. Yeah, चलो. चलो. Yeah, yeah. Prakash sir, I'll yeah, share yeah. your. i'll make you presenter you just share your screen once so that we are go for your next talk okay sure rest yeah. of the people can log out we are just having a trial run for day after tomorrow yeah i can see your screen prakash yeah so i'll just uh, this is another presentation the other one is not ready but yeah each. so i can see your presentation nicely i'll just give you a video cam request yeah you got webcam request did you get a webcam request no yeah i got it yeah so your audio is good prakash i can even see i saw your screen but there is something blackening out has happened just now hello prakash yogesh yeah. yeah 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 okay so i am seeing your screen yeah i can listen to you also just uh, giving you a webcam request ek bar aap dikh jao so i have to change the settings on this yeah. so i think you can see now yeah yeah done 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 yeah okay okay so i can see you i can see your presentation ek do slides yeah. aage piche kar pop so that then ah. we are totally okay yeah ho yeah. raha hai yeah yeah bilkul bilkul so okay. i'll generate a link tomorrow morning and uh, we will send we will get the email so we will okay. see you on uh, wednesday okay wednesday yeah okay great thanks great job good night thank you thank bye you. thank you yes ma'am